Path of Exile lets you hire thieves to do your dirty work. EverQuest 2 hits players with game update 115. Vigor announced it's headed to the PS4 and PS5. And League of Legends' latest champion knows it's not about the win, it's about the thrill. But mostly about the kill. What's up guys, James Blonde here with your weekly recap of gaming news and announcements of the week of September 4th, 2020. And once again, we've got another pretty packed week of news coming off of Gamescom. If you've been itching for a new anime style MMORPG that's free to play, September is set to deliver as Genshin Impact has announced that it will launch on PC, mobile, and PlayStation 4 on September 28th. We haven't talked about Genshin Impact before here, but it's a beautiful game set in a fantasy world ruled by seven elements and with deep story elements. It even has its own full color manga. Features a full open world, a cast of memorable characters, an elemental combat system, and co-op play. In fact, the game's developer says the game is more about how you want to play, be it single player or with others whenever you want, which is pretty nice. Kind of reminds me of DDO or Path of Exile. And speaking of Path of Exile, this week Grinding Gear Games has revealed its next major update and league, Heist. This league will be all about hiring thieves, stealing artifacts, and working towards the completion of a grand heist. Some shiny new rewards await those who can, including weapon and armor body enhancements, heist trinkets, relic, unique items, and more. The whole system looks pretty well thought out, from equipping members of your crew to getting blueprints for the areas that you want to steal from. The update also includes nine new skills and support gems, revamps of curses and steel skills, and over 25 new unique items. Expect it to go live on September 18th on PC and September 23rd on console. Meanwhile, Dual Universe, the sandbox space MMO, is now officially in beta and has dropped its NDA. The beta update includes a brand new beginner tutorial, daily rewards, repair units, and more. The whole game is run on a single shard, which means there's no servers. Everyone plays in the same universe. And the universe is vast, and more importantly, completely controlled by players as everything is voxel-based and can be changed, including running scripts and programs within the game itself. As a reminder, Dual Universe is not buy-to-play, but is a subscription-based MMO but it's priced at $6.99 a month. And from one voxel universe to another, the Minecraft-based MMO Hegemony has recently revealed its first expansion, Traders from the East, which goes live this Sunday, September 6th. This features a historical-themed event in which players can protect or raid caravans in asymmetrical PvP, plus 21 new quests, new unlockable ranks, the introduction of leatherworking and agility, two new vocations, and much more. It's really impressive for a free-to-play MMO to run on Minecraft, considering Minecraft is being used as the game engine. I guess there's room for one more sandbox in the mix. Pixel Worlds has released its mining update this week. The key feature is a brand new mining world complete with multiple levels, monsters and treasures. Pickaxes, gemstones, darkness orbs, and more await those who venture into this new content. And of course, there's new quests and achievements as well. Meanwhile, EverQuest 2 has launched GU-115, that's game update for those of you confused, titled Reignite the Flames. This update opens the gates of the Plane of War, introducing two new raids, Fabled Plane of War and Solesix Eye, with 14 new bosses to challenge. Level 120 adventurers can brave this new raid along with a new heroic dungeon, four new adventure quests, and a collection quest. The new Replica of War and Staff of War offer extreme power for those able to imbue them with planar essence. If you remember the awesome Stasis trailer for Destiny 2 from last week's recap, good news, this week they've got more in-depth with a preview of two of their new subclasses. The Warlock's Shadebinders Super, Winner's Wrath, summons a staff with projectiles that instantly freeze their targets. The staff's crystal can be detonated to shatter foes and unleash an icy shockwave. Meanwhile, the Titan Behemoth was also revealed, and their super is Glacial Quake, which creates a gauntlet from stasis. They can also issue freezing shockwaves. If you're waiting to see the Hunter subclass, don't worry, it'll be revealed next week. From one preview to another, Shadow Arena has offered a look at its newest playable hero, Sura of the Six Blades. 
Sora utilizes his own katanas along with kunai, relying on quick draw techniques and multiple forms to cut his enemies down with precision. There are four basic blade attacks which offer closing and knockbacks, plus a final freeform attack which can be used to float, stun, or knock back enemies, if you don't just want to deal a ton of damage in one blow. Kinda sounds like Jin in the Ghost of Tsushima. Riot's keeping things fresh in League of Legends with a new champion reveal trailer for Samira, the Desert Rose. Samira is a versatile champion who can improve their style grade by chaining non-repeating abilities and basic attacks with guns and swords. Her abilities include an enemy missile clear, a closing rush with bonus attack speed, and a life-stealing wild shot. Expect her in 10.19, but not only that, the PsyOps event has begun bringing with it the return of a one-for-all and some cyberpunk-themed skins. Also announcing a new event this week is Hearthstone, which is preparing for its Forbidden Library event. Set to run between September 8th and September 29th, this three-week event will include new Skullomance Heroes, a new Book of Heroes, and the return of the heroic Brawlysium. There will also be limited-time bundles, including packs from previous expansions. And finally, as a permanent bonus, you'll be able to join Battlegrounds with a full group of eight players now in a private match. Though ranked will still require teams of four or less. Switching gears, Vigor has also resurfaced in the news this week. First off, the team announced at Gamescom its release dates for the other consoles. Yes, it's finally no longer an Xbox One exclusive. Switch players can count on a September 23rd release, while PlayStation 4 will get it on November 25th. And while there's no final date, you can expect to see it on PlayStation 5 as well. Bigger also released a short teaser for the upcoming Season 5 Renegades, featuring the Gunslingers of Sawmill. We'll have more info about that soon, I'm sure. In other news, Crossout has launched its Black Wings update and event, which lasts until September 17th. This features a special mission, the Raven's Path, which grants a special currency just for the event. They can be exchanged in a new temporary workbench for a variety of things, including a new small caliber cannon, a defense module, and a variety of other weapons and cosmetics. There's also two new relic weapons, one of which is a Tesla emitter. If Mad Max is your vibe, make sure you check out the latest update. Meanwhile, War Thunder is raining fire with its latest update. This update introduces over 30 new machines, from Jaguar jet fighters to the Chiha long gun. There's also four new aircraft missions, naval missions for the Aleutian Islands, and a new aircraft location as well. And of course, there's a wealth of various changes, bug fixes, and balance tweaks too, so make sure you read the patch notes before you head into battle. And it's time to wish a sweet 16 to Travian Legends this month. And as has become tradition, the game is celebrating its anniversary with an annual special. Called Shadow Empires, this feature set allows players to choose from one of five factions after selecting their tribe, and these factions will battle collectively together for control of a historic European map. This introduces not only whole new combinations of factions and tribes, but also introduces a brand new map and strategy to the game. Not bad for a game that's 16 years old. Wrapping up the news, I wanted to mention something a little different from the norm. Razer, one of the leaders in gaming laptops and peripherals, launched the latest version of their Naga series gaming mice, the Naga Pro. This monster has three swappable side plates, a two-button side plate ideal for FPS games, six-button side plate for battle royale games or MOBAs, and a 12-button option for MMOs. It's a lot like the Naga Trinity, if you're familiar. Just, you know, upgraded and wireless. I mentioned this where I otherwise wouldn't because Razer was awesome enough to send us one to check out and oh man, it's no joke. Be on the lookout for my in-depth look and overview here once I get some time with it. But finally, let's wrap up with our weekend deals. Epic Games Store only has one free game for you this week. What's about that? It's called Into the Breach, which is from the creator of FTL. It's a procedural roguelike turn-based strategy game with a dark sci-fi setting totally worth grabbing. Meanwhile, Steam's got two games to play for free this weekend only. This weekend only. Warhammer Underworlds Online, which is a dice and card game, and Sound Self, a Technodelic, which is a voice-powered trance-like thing that you can also play in VR. There you have it. Good luck. Either way, guys, that's about it for all the major news and announcements for this week. Be sure to stay safe and keep your families healthy. Like always, you can find more information on the news topics linked in the description below. Feel free to discuss the news or even more news in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, wash your hands a bunch, hit that little bell icon to get notifications, and of course, share this video. 
But until next time, guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there, gamers. Gamers.